the graph of y is equals to f prime of x is equals to m x squared plus n x plus k is drawn below. The graph passes through points P, Q, and R clearly, as you can see on the sketch, right? And then the first question, 8.1, is saying let's determine the values of m, n, and k, right? Uh, so we're given here that y is equals to m x squared plus n x plus k, right? And we're given the function and three points. As you can see here, uh, we have three variables, m, n, and k, right? And we have three points. So with three variables and three points, we can set up three equations to try and find the answer, right? Uh, but then the easy way you would do this equation is if you substitute uh, point R first, right? Because R is a y-intercept. When you substitute R, you're going to get the value of k, right? So if we go ahead and substitute R, uh, we're going to get 1 is equal to m multiplied by x squared, x is 0, right? And then n multiplied by x, x is 0 again, plus k, right? Uh, m will fall away because we multiply by 0, uh, the same is true with n. So now we're left with 1 is equal to uh, k, right? So now we know the value of k. Uh, so our function will become y is equal to mx squared plus nx plus one right now we just left with uh m and n and we have the two points right so with the two points let's see how we can determine m and n so let's substitute uh point q first of coordinates one and zero right if we substitute that point we're gonna get uh zero is equal to m multiplied by one squared plus n multiplied by one plus one right so we have uh, minus one uh, minus m being equals to n right uh, here i just took one and m to the left hand side and then we can call this equation one right from here we can substitute um our point p uh, which is minus one divided by three and zero in our equation, right? If we do that, we're gonna get, um, uh, so the y value is zero, so we're gonna get zero is equals to m multiplied by minus one divided by three squared, uh, plus n multiplied by minus one divided by three plus one, right? So we're gonna get, uh, minus one. I'm taking, uh, this one here to the left hand side being equals to 1 divided by 9m minus 1 divided by 3n. So again, let's make our n the subject to the formula and equate the two equations, right? Uh, we're going to get minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 divided by 9m uh, being equals to minus 1 divided by 3n. So we're going to divide everything by minus 1 divided by 3, right? So if we say minus 1 divided by minus 1 uh, divided by 3, that should give you 3. And then if you say 1 divided by 9, um, divided by 1 divided by 3, right? Uh, the negatives will cancel out. You will get plus 1 divided by 3m is equals to n. So now what are we saying? We're saying that minus 1 uh, minus m. So let's call this equation 2, right? So if we create equation 1 and 2, we're going to get minus 1 minus m is equals to 3 plus 1 divided by 3m. All these two equations are equals to n, so they should be equals to each other, right? So if we are rearrange, we get minus 1 minus 3 is equals to 1 divided by 3m plus m, right? So minus 1 minus 3, that will be minus 4. And then 1 divided by 3m plus m will be 4 divided by 3 uh, m right so if we divide both sides by 4 divided by 3 uh, we're gonna get um, minus 3 is equals to m so now we can substitute this value of m in either equation 1 or 2 right equation 1 is uh, more easy to digest so let's substitute it there right so equation 1 was saying that minus 1 uh, minus m is equals to uh, n, right? So this, this will be minus 1 minus minus 3 being equals to n. 
So it's just minus 1 plus 3 is equal to n. So 2 is equal to n. So our equation now is y is equal to uh, minus 3x squared plus 2n plus 1, right? We have determined the value of uh, k. We have determined the value of n and m. Let's move to the second equation, 8.2. 8.2 saying that it is further given that uh, f of x, right? f of x is equal to minus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 2. 8.2.1 says let's determine the coordinates of the turning points of f right and then let's look at the mark allocation the mark allocation is 3 right so here when we derivate uh this equation right we're going to get y when we derivate f of x we're going to get this equation y right and then we're gonna equate this equation to zero when we equate this equation to zero and uh, we solve for x we're going to get x is equal to minus one divided by three and x is equal to one we can just substitute these two values into f of x right uh, so one turning point is going to be at f of minus one uh, divided by 3. Uh, that is because if you want to find the x coordinates of the turning point, you derivate the equation once and you equate it to 0, right? Because the gradient there is equal to 0. So if we substitute that, we're going to get minus and then minus 1 divided by 3 to the 3 plus minus 1 divided by 3 squared plus minus 1 divided by 3 plus 2. Uh, I'm getting 49 uh, divided by 27 right which i'm just going to round off to two decimal places and write it as 1.81 right now let's substitute uh, the other point which is one so we're going to have minus and then multiply by one to the three plus uh, one to the two plus one plus uh, two right and that should be equals to three uh, now let's uh, move forward and do 8.2.2. Uh, so the coordinates, let's just uh, conclude there before we move on. So the coordinates there uh, will be minus um, 1 divided by 3 and 1.81, right? And then the other coordinate is uh, 1 and 3. Those are the coordinates of the turning point of F. Let's do 8.2.2. Uh, 8.2.2 is saying that let's draw the graph of f indicate on your graph the coordinates of the turning points and the intercepts with the axis so we already have uh, the turning points right the turning points um figured out now we just need the intercept with the axis right so let's find uh, the y intercept right the y intercept should be easy to see that if we say f of 0, all the x's are going to fall apart and we're just going to have f of 0 being equal to 2, right? So we have figured out uh, the y-intercept. Now let's look for the x-intercept, right? So we have minus x to the 3 plus x squared plus x plus 2 being equal to 0, right? Uh, so what's happening here? Uh, we're supposed to solve for x, right? Uh, if you use trial and error here, you will find out that uh, the only value of x that is real that will satisfy this equation is when x is equal to 2, right? So this is the uh, x-intercept, we have the y-intercept, and we have the turning points. Now we can sketch uh, our function, right? So let me just... Uh, put our axis there and see what we can do. So there go our axis. Let's put the turning points first, right? So the turning points we have minus 1 divided by 3 and 1.81, right? So let's put 1 here, let's put 2 here, let's put 3 here. So 1.81 should be somewhere here. So we have a point there. Now let's look at the other turning point 1 and 3, right? Uh, 1 for the x value and um, three for the y value so we have another turning point there uh, now let's look at our intercepts the y intercept uh, is here at two and the x intercept is also at uh, two right so we have another point here so when we sketch our cubic function it's going to look uh, something of this manner so there goes our cubic function it must go through uh, two and then 
uh, it must turn here, right? At three, and then we go down to two for the x intercept, and uh, there we go, right? Uh, it doesn't look so great, but yeah. Uh, you can see what's happening here. Now let's do 8.3. So 8.3 is saying that uh, points E and W are two variable points on uh, F prime of X, right? This uh, function that we have here uh, drawn for us, right? That function there. And then um, they lie on the same horizontal line, right? So let's just, you know, put a horizontal line there so that we can better conceptualize what's going on. So let's say we have some horizontal line there. Let me just use a ruler because I do have one. Why should I make everything look so messy? So there goes our horizontal line, right? It's not exactly there, right? It might be below the axis. It might be above. I'm just, you know, putting a horizontal line for the sake of clarity. Uh, now, uh, the question goes on to say that H is a tangent to F at E. So let's say maybe our coordinate E is somewhere, uh, is somewhere here, right? Is somewhere here. And then uh, our coordinate W is somewhere here. Then if H is a tangent at E, uh, then H should touch E there. And then, yeah, it can look like that, right? And then uh, G is a tangent at W, so it can look uh, like that, right? Uh, then these two lines my, must go up until they touch uh, somewhere up there, right? And then um, the first question, uh, 8.3.1, is saying that uh, let's write down the value of A. Let's write down the value of A. And then the question has one mark. Now I want you to realize something here, right? Uh, if indeed uh, these two tangents lie on E and W, and E and W lie on the same horizontal line, then this uh, point here should be at the X of the turning point. Uh, so if we want to find the value of A, we're going to say A is equals to minus B divided by 2A, right? Back to the basics, the x coordinate of the turning point. Uh, so we're gonna have minus. We have the equation of uh, the, that graph there, right? Uh, we just determined it above. So uh, here it is here. So uh, b is two and a is minus three. So here we're gonna have uh, two and then divided by uh, two multiplied by uh, minus three. So that will be 2 divided by 6, which is equals to 1 divided by 3. So the value of A is 1 divided by 3. Uh, now let's do 8.3.2. 8 8.3 is saying that determine the values of B for which A and G will no longer be tangents, right? The value of B for which H and G will no longer be tangents to F. Now, let's go to a sketch uh, so that I can show you something, right? Uh, so let me just erase these uh, tangents here, right? Let me just erase those tangents. So so we can have tangents that look like this, right? And we won't have any problem, right? And we can have tangents that look like this, that go very up. We still won't have any problem, right? Uh, let's assume that they are touching here, right? Uh, we won't have any problem. We can even have the tangents touching here on the y value of the turning point. But then if the two lines start touching at a value that is less than uh, the y value of the turning point, then those two lines will no longer be tangents because they are going through the graph. They're no longer just touching it once. Uh, for instance, let's say we have uh, something like this. Then obviously, these two lines won't be tangents anymore because they're going through the graph. They're not touching it uh, once, right? So if those two lines touch at some point that is less than the y value of the turning point, then those two lines can no longer be a tangent. So basically, we're just calculating the y value of the turning point, right? And then say that when b uh, is less than uh, the y value of the tp, then those two lines are no longer tangents. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the y value of the turning point. We know fully well that the x value is 1 divided uh, by 3, right? 
So now if we want to find the y value, we're gonna get uh, y is equals to minus three multiplied by one divided by three squared plus two x, right? Uh, what is x? One divided by three and then plus one, right? Don't forget the equation of uh, y. And that should be equals to four divided by three. So the value of b should not be less than four divided by three. If it is less than four divided by three, then issues arise.